So good morning, guys. I don't know what's going on, but my um, I'm having some te technical difficulties this morning. So we're going to start with writing an equation from um, an ordered pair. Okay. So the first thing I need to do is I need to look at the information that I already have. This is my known information. I know that my slope is one third, and I know that I have a set of points that is four and six. Okay. So I'm going to fill in what is my slope. My slope is one third. I do not know what my X value is and I do not know what my B is. So what you're going to do is you're going to take what you know and you're going to fill it into the equation. So I know that one third times whatever my X value is. So, oops, sorry. So what is my X value? My X value for this situation is four. So I put a four here plus B. What am I going to put here? What is my Y value? Remember, this is my X and this is my Y. My Y value is six. So I put in what I know. I know that my Y is six, okay? And I know that my X is four. So I'm going to solve for my missing variable. One third times four, remember you just do, you pretend you put a one under there. Four times one is four. Three times one is three plus B. Then I'm going to subtract. I'm going to use my, what I remember for my one step equation, and I'm going to subtract four thirds from both sides. These cancel out. Now, how do I do a, a whole number minus a fraction? Well, turn this into an equivalent fraction. If everything has to have a three on the bottom, then what do I need to do to get a three on the bottom of this? I need to multiply this by three, right? Yes, this is just multiplied by one, so that just stays the same. So the, the minus four thirds stays the same, minus four thirds. Three times six is 18. So now I have an equation here. So I've got 18 minus four. What is 18 minus four? I'm gonna get 14 over three. So when I come back up here, I'm gonna say this plus, and then what is my final y-intercept? 14 over three. That's how you do this. That's how you solve one of these. We'll do another one. So this time, let's have our, we'll keep our slope as one third. And we'll have points 6 and 14, okay? 6 and 14. So what is the information that I know? What is my Y value? My Y value is 14. So I'm going to put 14 here. I'm going to substitute everything from my equation into, uh, um, substitute what I know, okay? So we have 14 equals, what is my slope? My slope is one third. Now remember, when you have these two next to each other, that means to multiply. So what is my X value? My X value is six plus B. I'm gonna bring down what I don't use the first time. What is six, one third times six? Remember, pretend there's a one under there. One third times six, we have six times one, which is six. And we have three times one, which is three plus B. Now, wait a minute, before I do anything else, I can look and say, I can simplify this. What is six divided by three? Six divided by three is two. Now I have a simple one-step equation. I'm gonna do my inverse by subtracting two from both sides, and I'm going to get 12 equals B. So now I can come back up here 
and I can write my equation y equals one third x plus 12. That is how you solve this, okay? Any questions? So that's what you do when you have, um, when they've given you the slope and they've given you one set of points. So when they've given you the slope and they've given you one set of points. Now we're going to look at what happens when you have two sets of points and no slope. So let's just say they gave me, look at my black. Oh, let's use green. Let's say we have ordered pairs of four and zero. And we have one and five. Okay. I am going to use the formula uh, slope equals y1 minus y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Remember, this is nothing new. This is just review. We've done this. So let's go back over here. I need to fill these things out. So this is my first set of points. So this is my x1. And this is my y1. This is my second set of points. So I'm going to label that x2 and y2. We did this last week when we talked about giving it a last name. So I'm going to follow along with what my equation says. It says I need to take 5 and subtract 5. Let me write that a little bigger so you can see. I'm going to take 5 and I'm going to subtract the 1. The y1, which is 0, and I'm going to go up here, I'm going to say x2 is 1 minus x1, which is 4. So 5 take away 0 is 5, and 1 take away 4 is a negative 3. So that means I would have a negative slope. Something's not right here. That doesn't seem right. Let's look at a different one because I don't like the way that turned out. That doesn't seem right. We have y2, y1, and we have x2 and x1. Yeah, I don't like how that turned out. Our slope should not be a, um, a fraction. So I don't like the way that one turned out. And I want to look at that for a second. But I'm going to change it. I'm going to do a different one. See? I know Miss T likes to change it up because I need to make sure that it makes sense. And I didn't like that. That one was the, definitely the wrong answer. I don't want to start with a fraction. That answer was correct, but I don't want to start with a fraction. I want to make sure we're doing whole numbers. So we'll do negative four, negative two, negative three, positive five. We'll do that one. All right, same thing. I'm gonna do my y2, which is five, minus a negative two, and then over negative three, minus negative four. Okay, sorry, Siri is literally answering me and I don't know why she, he's answering me because I didn't ask him for the, the details, but apparently he knew the answer. So we have our points of negative four, negative two, negative three, positive five. So I have my two, which is five, minus my y1, which is a negative two. And then I did my negative three, um, my x2, which is negative three, minus my negative four, which is my x1. We already know that we need to change this because a double negative means that it's going to be a plus sign. So I'm gonna put five 
plus two, because as I said, these two here, negative times a negative gives me a positive. These two here, same thing. Negative three plus four. All right. So I'm going to five plus two is seven. Then we have a negative three plus four. Remember they're opposites. So you have to subtract them, which gives me a one, which means my slope is one. So for right now, I know that my slope is going to equal seven. Sorry, not one, I'm sorry, seven. So I know what my slope is now. The next thing I need to do is find what my y-intercept is. I'll let you take a picture of that if you need to. You do this first. Whenever you get the point, you do this first so that you can get the slope. Then you take the slope and one set of your points and do what we did the first time the first, with the first example. So can you take a picture or screenshot it real quick? I'll hold still so you can. All right, and we're back. Then we're going to go and we're gonna put everything back into our equation. So what is the information that I know? I know that I have a negative two for my y value. I know that my slope is seven. I know that my x value is a negative four. And then I just put my plus and my b. So let's get going. We have seven times negative four. What's seven times negative four? A negative 28. Then I have a one-step equation. I am going to do the inverse of a negative 28, which, add, which is adding 28. What I do to one side of my equal sign, I need to do to the other. Those cancel each other out. I bring down what I didn't use. We have a negative, tw negative two plus 28. Opposite signs mean to subtract. So I'm taking two off of 28, which leaves me with 26. So now I know that my B is 26. So I can take, so I can take this information here and I can create my equation. So my equation is going to be Y equals seven that's my slope, 7x plus my b, which is 26. That's how you find the equation when they give you two sets of points, okay? So I have two sets of points. The first thing I had to do was I had to find my slope. I found my slope. I took my slope and I substituted my slope and one set of points. You can use either one. Either one will give, get you the same thing. I just happened to use the first one because it's the first one that I saw. So you're going to substitute that and that into the equation so that you can solve for your B, your y-intercept. Once you get that, you put everything back together as like a puzzle piece. What is my slope? I pulled my slope from here. I put it there. Now I know my slope. You, you plug it in right there. You keep the X when you're doing the equation, not when you're solving, but when you're just writing the equation, the X stays an X because every time your X value is something different, your Y value will end up being something different. So this is just the equation to have on how to figure out where all of these points on that line are, any of the points, okay? And that is how you solve it. If you have questions, please reach out to me, guys. Please reach out to me. Um, you can reach out to me. You can reach out to Ms. Wishton. You, um, you have the videos. You have the notes that we've taken before. So these notes, I believe, are titled Writing Equations from Ordered Pairs. Um, hopefully, you brought your notes home. If you did not, I will upload these notes on Google Classroom. Make sure you check the notes on Google Classroom. 
Make sure you're watching this video before you attempt the work. Do not attempt the work before you've seen the videos. It's only going to frustrate you, okay? Do a couple of practice examples. In, in Khan Academy, there are videos and practice examples. You can literally Google writing equations from order pairs practice, get a couple of practice problems under your belt. That means like get a, get a couple of practice problems that you have worked on and got the right answer for because usually they always have an answer key before you attempt the assignment. That way, when you go to attempt the assignment, you're not frustrated, you know what you're doing, and you don't have to take it 10 times. Please, I'm, I'm begging you to do these practice problems first. Do any practice problems that you can find first before you attempt the assignment, okay? And I will see you guys in the next video.